One day I was searching for something online and I came across tiny houses. Wow, I never saw things like that. It was interesting how people are inventive and how they create usable space to live. And we were in the process to purchase a new house. I mean, new house and maybe I was looking for something regarding the subject. So after watching few things on YouTube, I, I saw a, a thumbnail of a 30 years old looking guy and I click on it and it was my biggest mistake. <laughs> maybe not. I was working on something at home and uh, I was able to watch his all videos, I mean 1000, in the corner of my monitor. Well, my monitor, as you see, is only 34 inches big, but I was able to watch it all. I remember when I asked Wendy, darling, what does it mean boondocking? She said, it sounds German, I don't know. Well, I finally got that it means being in the boonies, dry camping, no water, no power, no sewage. I think he said that people in the cities live like rats. They go to work, from work go home, sometimes they go to the store, eat, sleep, and next day the same. Work, home, stores, and once per year their bosses will release them for about 14 days to go out, away from their home, to the wilderness, to enjoy freedom, vacation time. And I was sitting in my home office in the front of the screen, watching a poor looking guy speaking simple things that were piercing my heart. I already had a heart attack a few years ago. And because of the right kind of life, I think. Later on, I was reading my evidence Bible. And I came across some additional material in it that human beings on average live about 70 years. And here I am, 58 years old when I was reading it. Now it's almost two years later. I see how week after week go faster and faster. I know you can say that this is a nonsense, and I'm with you. Time doesn't change. 24 hours is still one day, and, and one hour still has 60 minutes in it. But I think you know what I'm talking about, what I try to tell you. I feel like the time go faster. If I'm lucky, I have about 10 years of life times 52 weeks in one year equals 520 weekends. You know, Wendy is a massage therapist and sometimes I see her customers. They have problems with their bodies. So for how long I will be able to function in this world? Our daughter is already 18, so thank God we don't need to deal with the basic things. Time to see the world again. I said again because I believe I have been a nomad in my DNA. I was born in a small town and I always wanted to go somewhere else. Finally, when I was 18, I went to the big city. Many other things took place, but nine years later, I left my country and I went to Norway, Denmark, Sweden, and finally, I ended up on the cruise ship and I saw a small part of this beautiful world. From the North Pole to the pyramids of Egypt, from the Mediterranean Sea to Los Angeles and Acapulco. I remember this very well. You know why? Because I met there my beautiful wife. We worked together on the ship. After that, we went together back to England, then to Poland, then back to England. We got married and went to Poland and we lived there for 12 years. It just happened. Finally, we came to the USA in 2002 and in 2015 we became US citizens. First nine years we lived in Chicago area and then we moved to Arizona. You know, 
no snow, no crazy winters. And now I have 10 years left if I'm lucky. I watch people who are full-timers, you know, full-timer RVers. I watch van life episodes. As I mentioned before, we were in the process of buying a house and, it, and, and my heart was somewhere else. Wendy was mad. She didn't know what happened to her husband. One day I took her by hand and I said, could you watch with me a video? It was a, a freshly released RV Nomads movie. Inside I was crying for freedom. I felt like I'm in prison that I created by myself. I wanted freedom. I wanted to go to places I have not been before. You know, I found my wife in Dominican Republic. We were together on the ship. We experienced beautiful evenings on the deck at sea, drinking wine and eating French baguettes and cheese and drinking coffee in the morning with Danish pastry. What has happened to us? We became slaves to the banks, slaves to the credit card companies, having two cars, two children, two pets, too much debt, not being able to afford to travel and be free again. I said, I wanted my freedom back. So I started to save money to buy a motorhome. Wendy said, yes, darling, one day. But I was persistent. I knew that I have only 520 weekends left and then I'm gone or I'm so old that I cannot travel any longer. Yes, my journeys will be to the doctor or hospital. Hell no! I will die fighting. I am not going to simply surrender to this system without a fight. So, so the brave heart, the, the lion's heart just woke up. I only have to infect my wife that we both will have the same craving for freedom and the goal will be reached. So saving money, praying, talking, complaining and talking again and praying the seed was planted. One day I had a bad day emotionally and when Wendy heard me saying it looks like it will never happen that we will travel again, suddenly something happened to her. She saw her husband depressed and she knew that she needs to do something. During our conversation, she said, you know, in 2022, we will hit the road for a year. I almost got a second heart attack. At the same moment, the, the skinny boy locked inside the 250 pounds fat man wanted to shout with joy, scream like a man locked in prison with a life sentence, and now is released to the freedom again. The sun started to shine again, although in Arizona it's shining all the time. The dark clouds were kicked to the corner of my life. I started to experience joy as I did many years ago. A few weeks later, we have got another beautiful news that our son Isaac and his beautiful wife Claudia are going to have a baby. For a just short moment, I decided to become a Democrat. And I embraced the motto, never let crisis go to waste. I convinced Wendy that it would be wonderful to go to see our grandchild. And instead of being a pain in the neck to our son, we could stay in our motorhome when we visit them. She agreed. And the idea to travel to Chicago and spend time together with our new offspring sounded delightful to my British queen, I met Wendy. So I went to my office, but now I was on the mission. My mission was to find the best suited RV for our travels. 
I wanted something practical and that my budget will not be stretched to the limits. So I had a number in my mind and I started to search for this baby, I mean RV. Believe me or not, but my prayer was, if it is not your will, Lord, let us not buy it. I don't want to have something that I will regret. So I found one and the dealer said, okay, I just needed to go to Indiana. A few days later, somebody else came and bought it. I was not mad, not furious. I said, thank you, Lord. It looks like it was not the right one. So finally, I saw a motorhome, but it was not in our price range. But being a Jew, 1%, proven by DNA, by the way, I have nothing to lose to ask to, to the seller to come to the level of our price range. Of course, the answer was no. Well, two weeks later, I sent another message because I didn't know that if you purchase RV from a private person, you don't need to pay the, the sales tax. So this amount of money I could invest in the value of our new RV. I prayed and I said to Wendy that if he agrees on this amount, I believe this is it. She agreed with me and we got a positive answer. Well, now we are in trouble. We needed to find a bank to give us the loan. <laughs> yeah, this was not easy. I'm not going to spend time explaining this dilemma. But finally, I found a great company online and they gave us a very good deal. Wendy decided to go with me. Where? Florida. You can say, come on man, as Biden would say, you live in Arizona. This is RV's Mecca. Yes, it is, but the price was not right for me and we needed to go to Florida. <laughs> I know it sounds crazy and at the same time excited. We are going to travel to the other corner of this continent and we are going to travel back from the other corner home. I need to explain a bit about the situation we're buying from a private seller. We should inspect this motorhome, then call the loan company that we are okay to buy it, wait another 24 hours for them to process the loan, pay off the seller's remain loan to the other bank, and then when they get the confirmation that the, the bank is satisfied with the transaction, they could release the RV and we could drive back home. Now you see the whole picture. I watched the seller's presentation video many times. I was in contact with the seller, with the loan company. Then the loan company sent the inspector to make sure that they will provide us with money for a motorhome that has value of the loan. Of course, we paid for the inspection report, but we didn't see it in person. You know, when they named this new addition to our life based on the whole situation, Faith. So the name of the RV is Faith. We've got two cheap tickets to fly to Florida, rent a car or take a bus or, or train or Uber. Well, the price was similar, so we rented the car and we ended up in Stewart, Florida. We started to travel at midnight and by noon we were in Stewart. We met the owners of the RV. We spent more than an hour with them. We learned a bit about the, the new family member and we didn't even start the engine. You can call us crazy or mighty people of faith. Well, we don't recommend this kind of behavior unless you are crazy like us. Well, I prayed a lot for this to happen for God's protection from any lemon purchase. I knew after watching more than 1000 videos of Nomadic Fanatic that 
A motorhome is a house that goes through an earthquake every time on the road. So I knew that things will pop up and had to be replaced and corrected. I was ready, I mean mentally, only mentally, because I didn't have with me any tools to deal with any surprises. After we said goodbye to them, we started to drive back west. And here we have few videos showing our trip back home. I'm not going to ask you for forgiveness that we that the sound is bad or, or the video is shaken or whatever else. For about 15 months we didn't do anything with the material we recorded. We knew that it's going to be a lot of work. By the way, if you want to complain about the quality of our high quality production, first produce your own video and then we can talk. Yes, I have high regard for everybody who is making videos and posting them on the internet. It is a lot of work. In the beginning, when I heard that one minute equals one hour of editing, I thought that they were exaggerating. Now I can say, yes, it is true. It is getting easier day after day, but in the beginning, it is a, a lot of work. Well, coming back to the story, our grandson Milan is going to be one year old in June 2021. And, and we decided that we are going to see him in person and we will drive our motorhome to Chicago. So the first plan was that I'm going to drive by myself and Wendy is going to fly from Phoenix to Chicago, spend time together. Later on, I should travel north and aim for the Yellowstone Park, pick up Wendy from nearest airport and spend our 30th anniversary over there in Yellowstone. Then travel to Salt Lake City. Wendy will fly back to Arizona and I will drive slowly through Utah back home. Of course, I would like to have Wendy with me all the time, but you know, running a business, it looks like she could not have too many days off. You know, she is the owner, she is the boss, but you need to take care of everything. So the plan was almost written in stone. A few days later, my stones with my plan we crashed. An experience similar to Moses with the Ten Commandments. Wendy decided that she is going to travel with me. Well, I started to have a panic attack. This woman is sitting on a branch with a saw in her hand and cutting off the flow of our finances. <laughs> but hello, the name of this motorhome is called Faith. So we gave a name to our escapade. Faith is on the move. Why do not have faith enough to spend three months on the road and see how we can manage financially? This is my last 520 weekends, remember? I would love my grandchildren to learn a bit about the pioneers who came from Europe to America in 2002 and influence their destiny. I personally, I, I would love to know more about my roots, but I don't have any materials. Maybe one day I will talk more about it. But you know, I started to look for a domain and we got it. www.faithisonthemove.com You can follow us via internet and see our journey subscribe to our channels and of course purchase from our Amazon store. You will become part of our excitement, of our history, of our journey. I hope that this will awake many people, family, friends and whoever is watching these videos, wherever you are. And maybe we will see you on the road one day. You never know. In the end, 
I would like to say something funny and true to the ball. Don't take life too seriously. Nobody gets out alive anyway. Be blessed and maybe see you again online or in person.